Hello Greg, this is uh, January the uh, January the 3rd, Monday January the 3rd, 1994 and uh, so far this year in uh, Redland Bay it's been a very very hot extreme heat, extreme heat with northerly winds most, uh, most trying I'm recording this um, on a very hot afternoon. I'm having to turn the fans off because the otherwise the fans, the sound of the fans will go onto the tape through the microphone. So it's uh, it promises to be a be a hot afternoon. Uh, since I'm cutting the cutting the last tape on the subject of um, level two after level five, I realised that. Um, so much more new material has come to light that uh, I really, really better call the last tape um, uh, part A, and I'll call this part B. So the old tape was part A of, of level two after level five, and this is uh, part B of uh, level two after level five. Um, the first of all I'll give you the the best way to to run this procedure that I know of to date uh, first of all running the process itself um, the best way to run the the, the process is you, you've, you've done everything you see you, you've done your test you you you, you found your bonding you, you know you've got your classes here you've got your A and you've got your B and you're, you're, you're all ready to, to break the bonding Right, well, this is the best way to run the process. Um, the first off, you'd start to find some uh, differences between A and B. Now, you run that process until no more answers. Now, that is the best way to run that process, to no more answers. So you, you run differences between A and B until you have no more answers. Then you would switch over then to similarities. You then start finding similarities between A and B, and you would run this until you have no more answers. Then you would go back and do differences between A and B, again until no more answers, and back onto similarities between A and B until no more answers. And back again, but you go backwards and forwards until you have absolutely no more answers on either side of the process. Follow that? And that is the best way to run the process. Mm. There's absolutely no point in sitting there com-lagging the answers out. The reason being that uh, when you run differences, you start assessing the differences and then the similarities start to show up. So you, you, run, you run the differences until you, until you have no more then, then you're all ready to run similarities, you see. So then you start assessing a few similarities, as in similarities until you have no more of those, and then differences start to show up again. So by, by running one against the other, you get the, the optimum gain from the process. It's simply because uh, it's a flip-flop of process. You're running differences, similarities, back to back. And because you can do this, you can run this process to no more answers. By the way, that's a general principle of auditing. It's a, it's a not very well known principle of auditing, but it's a general principle of auditing that when you have a, a flip-flop back-to-back -back process of this nature where one, where running one side stimulates answers on the other side, running the other side stimulates answers on the first side, you can always run both sides to no more, or run either side to no more answers than over the other side to no more answers. It's quite safe to do this on a, on a, on a flip-flop type of process. For example, you could run ARC straight wire process, general ARC straight wire on a person if you wanted to, in ordinary Scientology auditing. You could run it, you could run it uh, to no more answers. You, you would be quite, quite, quite safe because it's a flip-flop type of process. Running, running moments of affinity um, triggers moments of communication in the mind and, uh, communi and moments of reality. So by running, you could run affinity until no more answers, then moments of good communication until no more answers, then moments of reality, agreement to no more answers, then back to, to, to good communication or, or back to uh, high affinity to no more answers. You see that? You could run a house straight while like that to, to no more answers. It's quite safe to do so when you've got a, a, a flip-flop type of process like this. Not a, general, not a generally well-known principle of auditing, but it's true.
when you're running a flip-flop type of process like this, of course, when you arrive at the point of no more answers, of course, that, that will also be a point of no more change. So it doesn't violate the, uh, the general rule of, of auditing that you, you continue with a command until no more change. Because when you've, uh, when you've got no more answers, you'll find that's a point of no more change. So it's quite safe to leave it. OK, so much for that. A little background material there. But bear in mind that uh, it's, not a, it's not entirely safe to run all auditing commands to no more answers. Some types of auditing commands, the non-flip-flop, when you're just running a single auditing command, they should be run to no more change. That is, that is precisely correct. It's not entirely safe to run it, all processes to no more answers. But I, I think any, any, uh, any, any therapist worth his sort would know this. OK, that's the way you would run... Uh, that's the way you would run, run the process. Um, you, you just flip-flop between differences and similarities. Now, as you, as you ran the process, you will find the I in terminal I and terminal B will start to merge. You'll get this merging phenomena in the, of the two. And uh, as you can start to complete the process, as the process begins to run, run flat, you will, you will see the, uh, the merging of the two into one single terminal. Now all that indicates is that um, there is now a common class, that you can conceive of a common class there of AB. In other words this this class now is no longer a null class and it's now got members in the class so therefore the bonding is broken. As soon as you can conceive of a common class between A and B well obviously you, you've achieved your goal. Your whole goal is to break the bonding and that's what you've succeeded in doing once A and B have a common class. In other words, they, uh, they have some common qualities there. It's worth interesting to note that if you continue the process beyond this point there, that uh, not only will you get the merging, but the, the whole... Um, you will start to go into the erasure. You, you will see the, the, the terminal, even the common terminal start to erase eventually. And as the charge goes off it more and more and more, not only will you get a common class, you get the merging into one common class, but then this common class will start to fade out. And eventually you'll find it very, very extremely difficult to, um, to put up the two terminals. You put up one terminal, and before you, then you've got to mock up the other terminal. As you mock up the second terminal, the first one vanishes, <laughs> it erases. Then you put the first one back up, and the second one vanishes. You can't hold the two. You're, you, in other words, you're working into an erasure process. So be prepared for, the, for erasure. You're, you're looking at erasure. Now this won't happen if you attempt this process prior to level five. All that's happening is that, remember, I'm using this process after level 5 has been flattened, so it's been run on an erased bank. So, of course, you can expect to find that the, uh, the matrix itself starts to break down, and you start to see that the, the, the terminals start to go into erasure, even as, even as you're trying to work the process beyond the point where you should have finished it. It's, it's, not, it's not harmful to do so, but you just get, you know... Just note it in passing that you will go into erasure if you go past the point of merging. And eventually, you don't, so don't be surprised if that happens. Don't be surprised if your terminals erase and it becomes very, very difficult to hold both of them in existence at the same time. So that's the that's really the the the, um, uh, the, the final end point of the procedure would be the erasure of the. Uh, of the two, not only the two terminals, but the erasure of the common terminal too. You'd be left with a handful of nothing. That would be the, the, the um, that would be the end point there, the final end point. But the process um, can be quite safely left at the point where you can see that uh, A and B do have a common class, and you've broken the bonding. Because after all, that is your goal is to break the bonding. But if you want to, you can run the process through to erasure. It only takes a few more commands to do so. I can assure you and you'll go through to, to erasure. Now, there's only two exceptions. There's two areas of life, life and living this, where this won't occur. The first of them is when you're dealing with... Um, when you're dealing with uh, areas of the bo where the body is involved, for example, on the subjects of eating and sex. Remember when I cut a lecture on the subject of sex I told you that although you can erase sexuality from the human mind you can break the double bind 
of sexuality in the mind you can't break it on the body so you'll still find that you you may find if some of your classes A and B classes are associated with the subject of eating or the subject of sex there that you won't you won't get a clean erasure simply because the body is itself will be holding these things in existence still because the body st will still be subscribing to the double bind and will still be holding them in existence so be, be prepared for that to happen be prepared for that to happen and the other area where you won't get a clean won't necessarily get a clean erasure is when the the two within the A and B by their intrinsic nature in the universe are separate do you follow that? For example, supposing your I was a living being, a living creature, and your B was, was, uh, was an object. Well, uh, they are intrinsically different, aren't they? One is a, a living creature, one is alive, and the other one is not alive. So you, won't, you wouldn't expect to get a merging there, would you? You see, because you're asking them for this, this, this merged, uh, this common class to be both alive and not alive simultaneously, which is a contradiction. So it can't merge, you see. So if you bear that in mind, if, you, if your I and your B, if, in, if they're intrinsically different by their very nature, and if merging them would produce a contradiction, a logical contradiction, then of course you won't get the merging and you won't get the erasure. So just bear that in mind there. That um, so there's two areas where you can expect not to get an erasure, not to get a clean merging, not to get a clean erasure. One is where the body is concerned, and that's on the subject of the body goals packages, that's on the, mainly on the subject of sex and less on the subject of eating. And also the second area is this area of uh, where the A and B are intrinsically different. You wouldn't expect to get uh, a clean erasure there or even a clean merging. Okay, now the subject of RI. Um, strangely, um, RI does, running of RI can be helpful in this procedure. The, the, the procedure, as I say, is extremely fast and um, the, the matrix itself is, is a little sort of energy mass strange but there it is the matrix itself as the matrix blows there's a little slight loss of energy mass so be prepared to run a little RI on this uh, procedure don't be surprised if you need to run RI while running level 2 after level 5 and it's correct to do so you should run it just like you would run it normally you should run RI before you start the process you should run it during the process if necessary and you should run it at the end of the process so don't neglect RI on, uh, on level 2 after level 5 the uh, <clears throat> theoretical reason as I've just intimated is that the reason for this is that the uh, loss of uh, matrix Loss of matrix is also a loss of importance, so you have to repair this importance. So that the uh, be prepared to use your RI. Okay. Now, if you've been following this very, very carefully, following this through very carefully, you'll have realised that um, that level two after level five is an erasure process. Is an erasure process, which tells us that level two itself. Level 2 of my technology is an erasure process except for the interfering factor of the goals packages. You see that? Once we remove the interfering factor for the goals packages, the live goals packages, you know that you've erased the to know, the to know goals package and all the... Uh, Net, all the junior goals packages that need to be run have also been run and the, and the general to no goals package has gone through to erase you once you handle the goals packages level 2 itself becomes an, er an erasure process in other words you can take any two terminals and I've checked this out and proven it quite conclusively you can mock up any two terminals there and put them side by side in the mind and start finding differences and similarities between them and uh, within a few commands and run, run each side to no more answers and within a few commands you'll be sitting there holding a handful of nothing 
you can blow them you can blow them now this won't happen on level two before level before you run level five but it happens on when you run level two after level five so we would we would confidently expect to get the phenomenon that we do get when we use this process to to break bonding we would expect to to to, to walk into an erasure and which is precisely what does happen because uh, level two is an erasure process after you've run level five so uh, bear that in bear that in mind bear that in mind level three by the way is also an erasure process after you've run level five level two and level three is an erasure process after you run level five it tells you that if you wanted to you could time break a and b after you run level two differences and similarities you, you could time break them but you'd have to be quick <laughs> because I can assure you that, that just running the differences and similarities will eventually leave your hand holding a handful of nothing so you, you better be quick with your time breaking because level 2 is going to erase them they're going to go on level 2 you won't have anything to, to time break on level 3 but um, similarly it, it, it's a, as a general procedure level three time breaking is an erasure process after you've run level five you see that so so just just bear that in mind too in passing it's a technical date that level two and level three are both erasure processes after you've run level five after you've flattened level five and there's a no goals package has gone through to erasure that signifies the 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 uh, erasure of level five after you've completed the erasure of level five after you've finished with level five both level two and level three are erasure processes and they're very very fast erasure processes too i'm going to show you very very useful to bear in mind the uh, main use of this sort of thing would be in uh, say on an assist after a person has finished level five say and they maybe cut their finger say well all they'd have to do is just pick up the um pick up the uh, the, the, the the trauma of the cut finger you know with, with a knife cut the finger and they just pick it up and bring it and just tie break it you know just become simultaneously aware of the cut when it, at the moment when it was occurring and a present time around them now and there was the uh the things blow bang just like that or they could find differences and similarities between the uh, bits and pieces of the trauma of the cut finger and that that too would blow it you know or they simply time break it so level two or level three can be used there above level five as, a, as an erasure procedure which of course level two level three are not an erasure procedure prior to level five you've got to do level five you can't level two and level three are not a substitute procedure for level five you can stay on level two and level three forever they eventually go you know they go null as processes and then you have to do level five but after you finish level five you can go back and use use them as erasure processes Follow? But level two and level three are not substitutes for level five. They're never intended for such, and they're not a substitute. In other words, you can't blow the bank on level two and level three. The only way you'll blow the bank is at level five. Now, there's um, a few rules I can give you which will make the running of level two after level five um, a, lot, uh, a lot easier. Now, the, the first of these rules, rule one, is uh, keep it simple. If you're not careful with this procedure, you can you can work yourself into an enormous amount of complexity, and the procedure sort of grinds to us. It just drowns in complexity. The procedure does. Now, the way to avoid all this complexity is right back at the beginning of the procedure. Is when you do your test, when you're testing to find if a bonding exists. You know, where you think of I, and uh, when you think of I, you you think of of of, of B. When you think of A, you think of both A and B. All right. Or well, keep A simple. That, 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 that's the secret. Keep A simple. If you make A complicated, then you're asking to get a complicated B. But if you keep A simple, the chances are you'll get a fairly simple B pop up in your mind. But if you're going for complicated A's, 
you, you're leaving yourself wide open for complicated bees and the procedure is going to become a nightmare if, if you have complicated A's and complicated B's. Do you see that? You can't control what's going to pop up. When you think of A, you think of, you think of A, then B pops up. You think of the, this, you think A and a B pops up. Well, you can, you can control A, you can keep A simple, but you can't control B. So keep, keep A simple. And you're doing all you can to keep keep the procedure simple. Now, let me give you an example of this. Uh, supposing you on level A, you correct would be say uh, you you think of a girl. And every time you think of a girl, you think of a person wearing a dress. Okay, that's fine. That would be correct. But wrong would be to think of a black girl. Black. It's complicated. You've introduced a. You've introduced this subject of blackness. You've now got a black girl. You've now introduced a subject of blackness and non-blackness into your procedure, which is quite unnecessary. Keep it simple, a single terminal. Think of a girl. A girl is a person. You've got a girl person. Well, all girls are people. All girls are persons, so that's fine. A girl person, nice and simple. Black girl, no. White girl, no. Too complicated. See, keep it simple. Keep it down to a single. Keep A down to a single, a single identity, a single class. Not a, you don't want common classes at, at, at A when you're doing the test. Keep them down to single classes as far as possible. Get it down as keep A as simple as you can, and you'll win all the time. You make A complicated and you'll drown in a nightmare of complexity, I'll tell you, on this procedure. So right at the outset, keep A simple, then you'll get a simple B. But if B shows up complicated, well, there's nothing you can do about it. You're just going to have to work with a complicated B. It's the way your mind is stacked, you see. But keep A simple, and you'll go as far as you can towards keeping B simple. I'll give you an example here. You think of a, of a person wearing a dress and a black girl shows up. Well, there's nothing you can do with that. You're just going to have to work with a black girl. I'm sorry. That's the way your mind is stacked, you see. But you kept it as simple as you can because uh, you, your eye was simple. You, you, you thought of a person wearing a dress. Well, as a person wearing a dress. Well, as on, only people wear dresses. Um, you kept it as simple as you can, haven't you? So the golden rule is keep keep A simple when you're doing your test. Then, but you must take whatever shows up. Once B shows up, don't ever don't try and modify B. Stay with B. You must accept what shows up because that's the way your mind stacks. That's what you. That's what you. That's the bonding you're trying to break. You mustn't muck about with B. <laughs> once you once you set up A and a B shows up, well you're stuck with that B. You're gonna have to. That's the one you're gonna have to work with. Okay, that's, that's so much that. That's, that's rule one. Keep it simple. Rule two is the universe of discourse rule. The universe of discourse rule. Now, no matter what A and B are when you're doing the test, you know, you do the test, and you've got an A and a B pops up, and you've now got an A and you've got a B. Now, no matter what the A and the B are, they have some universe of discourse it, in which they both reside and it's up to you to find it you're going to have to find it and the best place to find it is right away the best time to find it is right away find it right away now let's give you an example here of a universe of discourse you, I'll give you more than one example um, you, you think of a person wearing a dress and uh, your mind offers you up a girl Okay, well, what's the universe of discourse? What, in other words, what what universe do they both belong to? A person wearing a dress and a girl. Well, they're both people, aren't they? They're the universe of people. They're not the universe of, of inanimate objects or or airy spaces. They're the universe of people. A girl, a person wearing a dress is a person, and a girl is a person. So, really, what you're saying is, uh, uh, if girl uh, if person, if person wearing dress, then girl person. That, that is your, that really is your correct, um, is your correct proposition, is your correct bonding. 
there. But it's, so you have a person wearing a dress bonded to a girl within the all oh, within the class of people. Get it? But you must be aware that they're within the class of people before you do the process. Otherwise, you can go badly astray, I can assure you. You can go very badly astray on this. As you will see, I'll show you how badly astray you can go if you don't realise that you're, you're dealing with a common universe, a, a universe of discourse. So, OK, you, you, you do your test and you, you think of a person wearing a dress and a girl pops up in your mind. You say, OK, that's fine. So now the terminals I'm going to be working with will be a person wearing a dress and a non-girl. OK, fine, that's your, there's, your, there's your two terminals that you're going to be working with on the procedure. Right, so you say, a non-girl. Right, well, a caterpillar's a non-girl, so I'm going to find some differences between a person wearing a dress and a caterpillar. Flunk. You didn't discover your universe of discourse. <laughs> correct. This is the correct way to do it. So right now, every time I think of a person wearing a dress, I think of a girl. Okay, I've got a person wearing a dress and a girl. Now they're both what? Well, oh, they're both people. Girls are people, and the person's wearing a dress as a person. So we have a person wearing a dress and a person who's a girl. Okay, now the terminals we'll be dealing with will be a person wearing a dress and a person who is a non-girl. Correct, correct. So your, your two terminals will be a person wearing a dress and a person who is a non-girl. And now you win. <laughs> You find, start to find differences between those two, and the, and the process runs. Do you see that? Because you, because you found your universe of discourse. If you don't find, if you don't find the universe of discourse, you, it's an open-ended process. <laughs> you could just run it on forever. You know, you could say, well, now a, non a caterpillar is a non-girl, so you could flounder on finding differences and similarities between a person wearing a dress and a, and a caterpillar. And uh, you'll get no merging, because once a... Uh, or, or it's very unlikely you'll get a merging, because uh, a person wearing a dress... Uh, who's also a caterpillar, it's uh, not an easy thing to conceive of. <laughs> it certainly doesn't exist in this universe. So it's very doubtful if you'll get any merging. And um, and you'll s simply be wasting time. So you, you, you eventually bail out of that one after a failure and think, oh, well, is there anything? So what well, do you think? Well, now there's um, a, a house brick is also a non-girl. So you now get to find, start to find differences and similarities between a person wearing a dress and a house brick. And uh, again, you see, everything you're finding is outside your universe of discourse, because the universe of discourse is a person. <laughs> so everything you've got to find there should be a person. You see that? So you, you should be looking for a, a, non, a, a person who is a non-girl. That limits that you, that limits it down to a person a person who is a non girl is going to be uh, it limits it down considerably, doesn't it? You see that, and and you'll win, you'll win. Now some might argue that by doing this you're you're short circuiting the the the, the end point of the process, because by finding a common universe that I and B are in, you're 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 short circuiting the the, the point where you want to get. Well, so what? <laughs> My answer that is so what? You're going to have to find this anyway sooner or later. So you might as well do it now. And the process won't run any other way. You right at the very beginning, you better find this universe of discourse and, and work with it. And this gets you over your major difficulty when dealing with negative classes. You'll find early on in the procedure that you'll find until you work with discover the subject of, of uh, universes of discourse you'll, you'll strike with horror these the B quite often shows up as a negative class you're dealing with a positive class and a negative class or maybe you'll be dealing with two negative classes 
But if you isolate your your your, uh, your universe of discourse, it, it doesn't matter whether you're dealing with a positive class, a girl, or a negative class, say a non-girl. It doesn't matter. Once you've got your universe of discourse, you can find you can find examples inside your universe of discourse. You see that on on either side, on the A or the B. Get you follow. It doesn't matter if A is negative or B is negative. Once, you, once you've got your universe of discourse, the process runs very, very easily and very, very smoothly. Until you've got your universe of discourse, it's an open-ended process, and you're not going to get anywhere with it. On, on either side, on the A or the B. Get you? Follow? It doesn't matter if A is negative or B is negative. Once, you, once you've got your universe of discourse, the process runs very, very easily and very, very smoothly. Until you've got your universe of discourse, it's an open-ended process, and you're not going to get anywhere with it. That was one of the major bugs I had to get out of the process, was to find out how to get that major bug out. It's simply a matter of the, getting the correct universe of discourse before you start doing the process. Well, uh, they are the only two rules, the only two rules that are applied to the process. There's the, there's the rule of simplicity, keep it simple, keep A simple. The thing you think of when you're doing the test, keep that simple. Keep that to a single class, a, a, a single class, and you'll win. And as soon as you get both your A and your B, you 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 think of A and B pops up in your mind. So you've got B, you've got the good, you've got your two things there. You've got what what is bonded. You've got your if A then B. You know what is bonded to what. Find your next thing to do is find your universe of discourse. And uh, that's the second rule. And once you've done those two things, if you follow those two rules, it runs like a well-oiled dream, I can assure you. But if you don't know those two rules, you're in real trouble with the procedure, and you'll never make it run, I can assure you. But with those two rules, you'll make the procedure run. And it's a beautiful little process. It's a beautiful procedure for bomb breaking. I'd like to just finish off with a, uh, a few theoretical ramifications of this material so that you'll know you've got, you've got your, your the theoretical material very, very sound um, when, you, when you run the process. The concept of differences in, in, in this universe, the concept that A is different from B, is essentially the concept that A and B have no common class. In other words, if, if the common class of A and B is null, and A and B have no common class, then A is different from B. And that defines it. You know, if A is different from B, then A and B have no common class. And if A and B have no common class, then A is different from B. But unfortunately, in this universe, you can't hold that phenomena. It, it lacks conviction, you know. In other words, you've got a couple of mock-ups here. You, you, you know, you, you mock up, mock up these two things, and uh, along comes your friend. You say, "Well, I've got these two mock-ups, and A is as A here, and there's B there, and A is different from B." And he looks at them. He says, "Well, I can't see how they're different from B." He says, "I can't see how A is different from B." And uh, you say, "Well, they're, they're, you know, there's A. You, say, you look at them; they look different." He says, "Well, they don't look very different to me. They look very much the same to me." Okay. He's actually playing games with you. Okay, how do you get over this? Well, the only way to get over this is to bond A to some quality X and bond B to some quality not X. Then your friend trots up. You say, look at these two mock-ups, you see. And um, A is different from B. He says, oh, I don't think A is different from B. You say, oh, yes, it is. Look, A's got the quality X. And B has got the quality not X. So that makes A different from B. Oh, yes, he says, I can see it clearly now. A and B are different, aren't they? You see, you've convinced him. So the bonding of A to X and the bonding of B to not X is a conviction phenomenon. The actual definition of difference in the universe is that A and B have no common class. That's, that's, that's the truth of the matter. And you will go a long way, I can assure you, to discover this truth. It's a very, very deeply buried truth. It's not an obvious truth, but it is true. It, that's the way it is. I'll say more about that in a few minutes. 
that uh, now with similarities it's exactly the same thing with similarities the the definition of, of the A is similar to B is that the class, the, the class of A and B has members in it. It is not a null class. If A and B is not a null class, then A is similar to B. In other words, A and B have something in common. That's another way of saying that A and B is not a null, that A, B is not a null class. Do you see that? So that's, that's how we define the similarity. We say that A is similar to B if the AB class has members in it and by reverse if the AB class has members in it then A is similar to B and we so if we, if we want we, but again we're up against this dif difficulty of conviction along comes someone you say I've got these two mock-ups and uh, A, and A is similar to B and he says perversely well I don't see how they're very similar they look very different to me he's playing games with you but now you say ah oh, look but you see A possesses this quality Y and B also possesses this quality Y so they both possess this quality in common so therefore they have, this, have a common class they have something in common so therefore they're similar aren't they oh yes he says I can see it now so again it's the conviction phenomena so, so, so similarity to the definition of a similarity is that simple thing that AB has, the class AB has members in it just as the very basic definition of, of difference between A and B when A and B are different then the class AB is null that's the basic definition, definition of a difference so bear in mind the basic definitions but you can't use them in the universe well you, can, you, you should know them but in games play in actual practice you have to bond a to X and bond B to not X in order to convince others that A is different to B. Similarly you have to bond A to Y and bond B to Y to convince others that A is similar to B. Get it? So it's not at all unusual in this universe to find two objects which are both different and similar not at all su su surprising is it which is what we find most objects in this universe you can find differences between them and you, you can also find similarities between them and that's why you can do that because this phenomena this, this what I'm telling you the conviction phenomena all the bits fit when you know what's going on you see so it's not uh, there's no contradiction bet between the fact that two objects I and B can be different and they can have differences be you can find differences between them and you can also find similarities between them in fact that is norm the normally the case in this universe the two objects will be different and similar simultaneously and it's achieved by making A bonding A to to this quality X and bonding B to the quality not X and, b and bonding A to the quality Y and bonding B to the quality Y and then you've done it <laughs> then A and B are both different and similar that's the way it works in the universe and this is very very different to the way it looks when you look it up in the dictionary when you look it up in the dictionary you look up the word different in the dictionary you'll find different defined as not identical to not identical that's different means not identical so when we, when the person says uh, two things are different they mean they're not the same well now logically you're in great trouble if you try and define difference in terms of non-identity you're in great trouble logically if you try and attempt to do this Although you can logically define identity very, very precisely. I mean, A is identical to B logically if, if the proposition if A then B and the proposition if B then A. If, if both those propositions maintain, then A is identical to B. Or at least it's uh, equivalent to B logically. 
but um, <coughs> certainly those two would would, would, uh, would if those two hold if A then B and if B then A they both hold you could say that A is identical to B certainly that applies in the human mind so the two will be identical there but then you say alright if they're not identical if they're different then they're not identical and if they're not identical then they're different oh no 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 your trouble here, you're immediately in logical difficulty because you cannot, you're not easily able to define the subject of non-identity. It's difficult to define it logically, like you can define identity. You can define identity, identity very easily within, within the terms of the proposition if A then B, but you can't define the non-identity with an if A then B type of postulate non-identity is simply the absence of identity it leads you into what is called an in logic what's known as, an, as, a, as a non-equation you end up with, with something which is not equal to naught you see that instead of something which is equal to naught you don't end up with equations you end up with non-equations and non-equations are notoriously it is impossible to arrive at definitions of anything when you're dealing with non-equations this is, this is known in philosophy and uh, so you, you're in deep trouble <laughs> if, you, if you subscribe to what's in the dictionary on the subject of differences if they define the difference as a, as a non-identity I, I, and I don't think it, you know anyone's done any work in this area for four or five hundred years. I, I think what happened about four or five hundred years ago, somebody said, "Look, we better have some definition of a difference." You know, what does the word "difference"? How do we define difference? What do you think, Joe? And Joe says, "Oh well, if, so if two things aren't identical, they must be different." And the guy says, "Oh yeah, that, well, that's good. That, that's certainly true. Yeah, that's what I'll do. That'll do fine." And it's been jogging down the time track ever since you define difference in terms of non-identity and it doesn't work <laughs> you simply can't do it <laughs> you try and do it you try and set up a logical system for difference based on non-identity you're immediately in deep very deep deep logical difficulties logical trouble with your definition of a difference and it, you end up with something which bears no relationship to what actually happens in the real universe <laughs> But my definition of difference it works exactly the way it works in the universe. And it explains why objects, two objects, A and B, can be both different and similar. So we don't get the, this difficulty. We have a very smooth run of it when we define differences and similarities the way I define them. So I'm, I'm sure that my definition is correct. It feels right, it checks out, and you can, you, can, you can derive some very workable procedures, psychological procedures from the definition. So I'm pretty darn sure that my definition of, of, a, of, a, of a difference, my definition of a similarity is the correct definition in, the, in this universe. The one in the dictionary is simply wrong. It's simply wrong. When they define a difference as a non-identity, two things are different if they're not identical. That is simply sloppy. It, it, it's simply wrong. It, it isn't the way it is. Now, there's no um, equivalent difficulty on the subject of similarities. You look up the word similarity in the, diff in the dictionary. They define similarity as alike. Well, two things are similar if they're alike. Okay. Well, it's a bit wishy-washy. You can't do much with it. <laughs> you know, it's not a it's not a definition you can work with. You couldn't, uh, you couldn't, you couldn't do anything with it. So, uh, but at least it don't, um, you don't get into any great, any great difficulties with it. But you can't use it, logically speaking, to try and try and work with. So my definition of similarities is the only one I know of. There's nothing in the dictionary that, that helps you. I don't know whether there is any accepted scientific def uh, definition of a similarity. I've certainly never come across in any scientific textbook, I've never come across the, any, def, any definition of a difference or any definition of a, of, a, of a similarity. Only the dictionary defines a difference as a non-identity. 
and I can assure you, you get into a you get into more more deep water than you'd ever want to get into if you, if you try and use that use that as a definition of a difference. It simply doesn't work. So I'll just give you that background material for for your edification. That uh, it's worthwhile to bear in mind when working with differences and similarities to get the theoretical background of it exactly right. The the actual definition of a difference is that. Difference. If A and B are different, then they have. Then their common class is null. That, that's it. That's it. That's the definition. If the, if the common class of, of A and B is null, then A and B are different. You see, that, that's the definition. And similarly with similarities, if if A and B are similar, then their common class is not null. And if the common class of of A and B is not null, then A and B are similar. So there's your basic definition. But because of the conviction phenomena in the universe, it works out the way I've given it, by bonding. To make A different from B, you bond A to, to, to a quality X, and you bond B to the quality not X. And to make A similar to B, you bond A to a quality Y, and you bond B to a quality Y. On the on type type I of this set, by the way, I, I used the um, symbol X for both differences, for the qualities and both differences and similarities, and it made it a little bit confusing. It's best to keep it separately. When dealing with differences, use the quality X. When dealing with similarities, use the quality Y. You keep them separate. So, th th so there it is, th there's the subject. I, I, I can pretty well wrap this subject up now. I've got this subject wrapped up. And I'm very, very pleased with this piece of technology. I'm very, very happy with it. And um, I'm pretty sure I've got all the, all the bugs out of it now. All, all the bugs have come out. I, I can't think I've been testing it, testing it now for a couple of weeks. Um, no less than that. But uh, pretty exhaustive testing for the last week or so, and uh, I haven't come across any more bugs. But it's a very useful piece of technology, and it, it winds up our, it wraps up our, our five levels very nicely. We go through levels one, two, three, four, five. Then when we want to go into bond breaking, we go back and use level two, or even level three if we want to in this specialized application but we're still within the five the five the five procedures of one to level one two three four five we still haven't gone outside it we're just using level two after level five level three after level five you see that but i'll call this tape level two after level five even though i do mention the, the idea of using level three after level five I can assure you that the, the procedure is a very powerful procedure. It's a very powerful procedure for, for, for breaking bonding in the mind. And uh, I say, it, the only limitation is when you're dealing with the area of this, where you've got the bodily goals packages, some, particularly the subject of sex and the subject of eating, you, you won't find that you'll be able to do, you won't be able to find you get much of an erasure there or much of a of a, of a breaking of the bonding there, because the body simply is is um, addicted to these um, these false identifications. It is addicted to this bonding. And also, as I've also pointed out, you won't be able to get a complete breaking of the bonding when you've got two two objects, which um, by their very nature are intrinsically um, intrinsically different by their very nature. By the very nature of the, by the very nature as objects are intrinsically different, then of course you won't expect to get any uh, any blending or any 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 great erasure there. But uh, within those limitations, the procedure is extremely powerful. Within those limitations, in other words, what I'm saying is that if if the only if the difference between A and B is only being set up by you. In you, you and your psyche, then you you will knock it into a cocked hat by using level two after level five. Don't you understand me? If it's if the difference is subjective, is entirely subjective in your psyche, and it's got nothing to do with your body, and it's got nothing to do with the rest of the universe around you. 
if it's entirely something you dreamed up one day then level two after level five is for you you can break that bonding and be free of it forever you can erase it and say goodbye to it forever by using level two after level five so again i wish you wish you good luck with the procedure and bye bye for now